guys, Richard Holdner here and welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a Pro Charger versus a Turbo. Which one works best and why? In this video, we're going to take a look at a comparison between a Pro Charger centrifugal supercharger and a pair of turbos. Now, don't worry, it doesn't matter that there are two turbos and only one supercharger. All that matters is whether you have a single turbo or twin turbos, that they're size big enough to support the power level, just like the Pro Charger. We're going to take a look at a comparison between the boost and power curves offered by each, the blower and the turbos. We're going to talk about why they do what they do and also why it might actually be beneficial to have less power. To get things started on our comparison between the boost and power curves offered by a centrifugal supercharger and the boost and power curves offered by a turbo, we're going to take a look at the NA motors first. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to run both of these on, in a direct back-to-back -back on the same combinations. They're two different motors. And not only that, they make different power NA. So get all your apples to apples comparisons or, or comments ready so you can do that. But don't worry. For you apples to apples guys, I'm going to adjust the boost down on the turbo so that we can... Uh, um, make this all even but I wanted to cover this and show you what the difference was but in reality this doesn't matter I have three other videos up where we directly compare a in the case of a modular Ford turbos to a roots blower a twin screw bl bro blower and a centrifugal blower all at the same boost same air fuel same timing also did that on a b16 Honda roots blower versus a centrifugal versus a turbo again same boost same air fuel same timing on a small block Ford roots blo blower versus a centrifugal versus a turbo again all of the same stuff so we know what they do we know exactly what they do what I want to show here is the differences between the centrifugal and the turbo and why actually having less boost and less power might be beneficial but we're going to start off with the na stuff so sit back and relax but go ahead make those comments this is our this is our centrifugal supercharged it's a 5.3 liter it had forged internals it had airflow research 205 heads which work very well obviously it had a comp cams blower cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you guys can take a look at the cam specs. This one also had a Holly high ram, so it was more kind of suited for high RPM use. Here is our turbo motor, and it made a little bit more power, about 35 more. It had is a stock bottom end. It's the motor that we did our Big Bang 5.3 with. It had a 215 trick flow head, uh, in this power level, the difference between a 215 and a 205 head is essentially nothing. It did have a bit, a little bit bigger cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. It was 231 compared to 227. And then it also had a fast intake. And most of what you're seeing here in the big jumps and torque and stuff is probably the fast manifold. But as I said, I'm going to go ahead and lower the boost on the turbo combination dramatically so and still show you the dramatic difference in the power curves between a centrifugal blower and turbos so now that we've taken a look at the naturally aspirated version of our pro charger supercharge combination let's take a look and see what happened after we added the pro charger in this case we added a pro charger f1a 94 now we put a pulley a setup on it that was a 425 inch blower pulley and a 7.75 inch crank pulley and so we were nowhere near the uh, maximum impeller speed of the blower we weren't trying to max this out we basically we wanted to kind of get to a thousand horsepower which we ended up doing we had a radius entry on the blower we also had an air to water intercooler from pro charger we also had uh, 114 octane race gas on it. We did not run this thing on E85, which we probably should have, but would have definitely helped us. But here's what happened when we added the supercharger to our combination. And we managed to get right at a thousand horsepower, a thousand five horsepower peak torque came at 758 foot pounds of torque. So we had added, you know, more than 500 horsepower with the with the pro charger so as you can see it was more than capable of adding a tremendous amount of power and getting into four digit stuff with this was fine it's important to note also that this 5.3 was actually bored over so it was bigger than a 5.3 but for this comparison it really doesn't matter we're trying to show what the blower does and what the turbos do so this will still be able to show that so a thousand horsepower from this 5.3 Good combination, the Pro Charger, there's more left with this particular blower. We've made 12, 1300 horsepower. So there's certainly more power to be had. But now let's take a look at our 5.3 combo with the turbos, and then we can kind of compare the two on the power curves and on the boost curves. 
To illustrate what the turbo did on the 5.3 that we ran the turbos on, we had two CX Racing 76 millimeter turbos. We had an air to water intercooler uh, from CX Racing. We had race gas in this thing, just like we did with the um, Pro Charger. And we're starting out obviously making more power with this NA. So I'm going to show you basically three different boost levels that we ran. Now we ran more than more than 21 pounds. But first let's start out at the same 21 pounds that the centrifugal blower made. And you can see we're making a lot of power. In fact, it's making 1173 horsepower and 1,025 foot-pounds of torque. But you're saying, hey, Richard, but remember, the NA motor started out with more power. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is, and we'll show this when I do the comparison, I'm going to drop down and boost a couple of levels to try to even things out. And what I'm going to do is get down to a boost level where the turbo combination made the same peak power as the NA combination. And then we can kind of compare the two at the same power level, regardless of how you got there. One of them, we ran only 15 pounds. And the other one, we had to run 21 pounds. But let's take a look at that. Here is our combination when we ran 18 pounds. The power dropped down to 1,093 and 937 foot-pounds. And here's what happened when we dropped it down to its lowest point to 1,013 horsepower and 865 foot-pounds of torque. And you can see that despite the fact doing this big bang, we, we had two turbos that were making, that had the capability of making more power than we thought that we would on this stock bottom end. But they are making a fairly good torque curve, you know, starting at around 4,500 or so, carrying it all the way out. And we could have obviously revved this motor quite a bit more because the power was still, um, was still climbing even at our 6,300 RPM shutoff point. But now that we've taken a look at what the turbo does, let's compare that to the centrifugal and see how the power curves compare between the two forms of force induction. Now that we've taken a look at what boost does to each of the combinations, adding the centrifugal blower to its combination and adding the turbos to that combination, we know that they got good gains, but let's compare them now. And the first thing we want to do is let's compare them like at the same boost level. So we have on the centrifugal, we have a little over 21 pounds out at 7,000. So here is what the turbo motor was with 21 pounds. And it produced 1173 horsepower and 1025 foot pounds of torque. So it did very well. It's making quite a bit more power than the supercharged one. But I know what you're thinking, Richard. Look, you started out with more power on the NA combination and you have, you're adding boost to that. So you're kind of multiplying these gains, which is true. And also the fact that the, on the turbos, we don't have parasitic losses associated with driving the blower. So the turbo at any given boost level is, even if we match the boosts identically, it's going to make more power than the superchargers. We've shown that in every test that we've run. So that's part of it. But what do you say that we, to make things even, let's drop the boost down on the turbos to get it a little more, more even. So here we dropped it like three pounds down to 18 pounds. It made 1,093, so just under 1,100 horsepower and 937 foot-pounds. And, and what you're seeing is not only does it make more power, but it's making a lot more power a lot sooner. So it's making a lot more average power production and a lot more torque. But I think the best way to compare this to kind of keep it even and get the apples to apples guys happy is I'm going to put up <clears throat> a boost level on the turbo where we made almost the same peak power as the centrifugal. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the other higher boost runs. We'll get rid of the 18 pound, we'll get rid of the 20 pound. This is at 15 and a half pounds on the turbo combination. So a full six pounds lower than the centrifugal. And yet look at the differences of the curves. So again, we see that the turbos are making more power from 37 or 3,800 all the way out to our shutoff point of 63 or 6,400 in the case of the turbo. 
we kept running the centrifugals because we were trying to get to a thousand horsepower with the pulley combination that we had. It would have been easy to swap the pulley and we could have made a lot more boost with the F1A94 because it has the potential to make a lot more power than this. We just wanted to do it the easy way. <laughs> and so we just kept revving the motor and it keeps adding boost and it keeps adding power. So it made 21 pounds out there. But take a look at the torque curves, for instance, in a comparison between the two. Now the centrifugal is making a lot less boost down here and we'll take a look at that when we look at the boost curves but if you look at a comparison of the torque production at 4800 we've got 639 for the centrifugal combination and 858 so you're talking about a gain of over 200 foot pounds of torque and that's from the difference in boost that we're going to see comparing the turbo to the centrifugal so let's check it out We've taken a look at both the changes in horsepower and torque offered by the different forms of force induction, the centrifugal blower versus the turbo, and it can be explained basically by looking at the changes in the boost curve. So this is the boost curve on the big bore 5.3 liter, the modified deal. Um, provided by the Procharger F1A94 with the intercooler on it. You can see it has a rising boost curve down at 3,100 RPM. It started out at 3.7 pounds of boost, so fairly low, and rose to a peak of 21.5 pounds out here at 7,200 RPM. Now this compares to the turbos, the two 76 millimeter CX racing turbos, and this is what the boost curve on the turbos look like at the same 21 pounds of boost. You can see that <laughs> they actually have similar boost curves down in the 3000 RPM range. Again, we size those turbos not to be responsive. In fact, we size them purposely to not be responsive because we didn't want to make a ton of torque. We wanted just to have a big horsepower number. So we thought that they would be oversized for this particular application on the, on the stock bottom end 5.3. But here's what the boost curve looks like at 21 pounds. It comes up over 20 pounds at 46 or 4,700 RPM and then kind of carries that. And this was not with an electronic controller. It was actually with just a manual wastegate controller with a T run to both of the wastegates because we ran two wastegates on this combination. And here's what the boost curve looked like when we had it lower at 18 pounds. Almost an identical curve, just it stops at a lower point, so it carries over to a peak of, uh, I think we were at 18.3 pounds. And here's what it looked like at around 15 and a half pounds. Again, just lower than the others, um, comes up the same, the, the turbo spool up the same. It's just that the wastegates are clipping it at this power level or this boost level, and this is what happens. And remember, if we take a look at this green line and compare it to the blue line, we see that we have more boost even at just 15 and a half pounds than the centrifugal does all the way out to 6,000 RPM or 61 or 6,200 RPM. And then the centrifugal is making more boost pressure beyond that. The thing is, when we looked at the power curves, you saw that the turbos, the turbocharge combination, even at just 15 and a half pounds, made more power than the other combination at 21 pounds and made more power everywhere. So they ended up making about the same peak out, of, out at the very top. It's just that the turbo did it earlier at 62 or 6,300 RPM and, and out at 21 and a half pounds at 7,000 to 7,200 on the centrifugal blower, it was able to exceed 1,000 horsepower. So they made the same peak power out at the top, but everywhere below that, and because one of them did it at 7,000, the other one did it at 62 or 6,300, the turbos were just able to make more power and they make more power per pound of boost. And because they're making basically more boost through most of the curve and all of that extra boost that it's making translates directly to torque production. Now you might be asking yourself, well, why are they doing this? The reason that they do this is because a turbo or the impeller on a centrifugal blower has to spin very fast to produce the amount of airflow required to feed these kind of power needs. And on a centrifugal blower, it's attached directly to the motor. So the impeller speed doesn't get very high 
until we get to a high engine speed. Now it's overdriven pretty dramatically. If you look at the internal step on a blower, it might be three to one or even four to one. And if you look at the step ratio on the pulleys, you have a big crank pulley and a small blower pulley. It might be two or three to one. So if we have a two and a half to one drive ratio on the pulleys and we have a four to one drive ratio in the blower, that means that at 7,000 RPM, we would be spinning the impeller 70,000 RPM. The difference is that on because the turbos are spun by exhaust, they're probably spinning that required RPM, whatever it is, we can use 70,000 RPM, but they're spinning that, that RPM down here at 4,500 RPM. <laughs> so they're already spinning what they need to spin to produce the boost and the airflow that they need to support the power level. And that's really the difference is that it's crank driven on the centrifugal blower, although overdriven, but not like it is with the turbo. It's relying on exhaust to get lots of impeller speed. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this comparison between a centrifugal supercharger and turbos? We learned the same thing that everybody should already know, that there's a big difference in the boost curves. There's a big difference in the power supplied by these different forms of force, force induction. But that's not the whole story. And I want to revert back to our power graph to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Because the boost curves and the power curves don't actually tell the whole story because there's an, another element to actually being able to use this kind of power. And if you look at the power curves offered by the turbo combination, let's say in this case at 21 pounds and then the centrifugal blower at 21 pounds, guys might be asking themselves, well, why would anybody use a centrifugal blower? Well, here's why. And this is why the Pro Charger guys are doing so well out in the different forms of racing. Why, why you see them on the Street Outlaws guys or the No Prep guys or Pro Mod guys. The reason that they work so well is power production is only one part of the equation. You have to actually put that power to the ground. And if you take a look at the extra torque offered by the turbo stuff, that might not be beneficial if you can't harness that extra power. Now, in these lower power levels, it's not much of a, it's not as much of a big deal because a lot of chassis can handle that kind of power. But imagine on the Pro Charger combination, instead of that being a thousand horsepower, imagine that number was two thousand horsepower or three thousand horsepower or even more. Now you're talking about dramatic power that gets very hard to harness. And even worse, if it's a turbo combination and it, and it's an extra four or five or 600 foot pounds of torque, what happens is if you can't put that extra torque down, you can't put that extra power down to the ground, you end up having to detune that. You have to take that extra power away. You have to manage that extra torque that you have. And that becomes difficult. The, the power curve and the boost curve supplied by the centrifugal blower in these forms of racing acts as another form of traction control. So you have a rising boost curve, you have a rising traction curve on the track, and they merge very well together. And that's why a lot of times you see these Pro Charger guys running very, very fast because they can make all of the big end power that they want. They can also make the right amount of power that they need to work with the track surface, get it all hooked up and utilize all of it while some of the other guys are trying to torque manage and take power away from the extra boost. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.